Every year in October, Lewis and Clark hosts an environmental symposium. Uh, this fall symposium is entirely online, which gives us opportunities to include experts like you. Um, our theme this year addresses biodiversity conservation, specifically the challenges and opportunities of successfully relating conservation knowledge, whether from scientists, resource managers, indigenous communities, or other sources, and conservation action, which is law, policy, activism, and management. So I'd like to ask you a few questions, um, which you can just answer informally. Um, and I'm recording the Zoom session, and then we'll make videos of these answers available to symposium participants so they can listen and hear and discuss what you shared. So my first question is, um, can you please briefly introduce one important case of biodiversity conservation in your area to viewers who may not be familiar with it? This may focus on one particular species or one particular habitat. And why is this case significant to you? Okay, Blythe, thank you so much for, for uh, joining me in this uh, symposium. And uh, about the question, I want to, to refer the answer to a very important program that we manage uh, with the Biopark Amaru uh, about amphibians, about the conservation of amphibians in the Andes of Ecuador. And uh, I think it's an important case of biodiversity conservation example because uh, normally the amphibians are no charismatic animals. They are little species of animals that most of people don't know about the, the role and function and importance and uh, some of these species, even they are kind of uh, not the value or the agreement of people. Normally, some of these species, they, they are part of legends and issues uh, with people because they're venom or uh, some legends about mm -hmm. bad things. So has been a very interesting challenge to promote conservation of this particular group of animals in Ecuador. First, because Ecuador, uh, it's a hot spot of amphibians uh, in the world. We have more of the 10% of the amphibians concentrate uh, here in Ecuador, the 10% of the diversity of amphibians of the planet is in Ecuador. And uh, in the area where we live in the southern of Ecuador, we have different types of habitats from the high paramos and cold paramos uh, that mo all my students of Liz and Clark, they you know how cold can be until the lowlands in the in the in the jungles in the amazon and all these micro habitats they uh, keep and host different species of amphibians and many of them they are endemic see so these endemic species and all these situations in the cultural and social aspects of uh, people, uh, they are an uh, interesting formula to, to develop uh, a process of uh, conservation and of the protection of the, the habitat. And I think it's significant because even with this challenge, we have developed a lot of interesting scenarios that I want to share with you. And uh, uh, it's significant for me because at the beginning we start with many ideas, but with uh, no uh, like a pronostic if we're gonna have the possibility to conserve the amphibians. But then, we develop the action to develop 
uh, procedures, and we have really interesting uh, answers from the community, the people, the managers, the resources, the laws, and now we have a successful program of conservation of amphibians in the southern regions of, of Ecuador. That's great. Hey, um, actually, Ernesto, also, um, can I have you introduce yourself and, and say um, your role with Amauta oh, yeah. and with the Biopark, too? Yes, of course. Okay, so, well, my name is uh, Ernesto Arbelaez. Uh, I am a biologist and conservationist of wildlife here in Ecuador. And uh, I have been, in the past eight years, a teacher of the fantastic class of biodiversity of Ecuador. Uh, and I am also the executive director and uh, director of conservation of uh, Amaru Biopark Cuenca, that is a refuge and rescue center of wildlife uh, here in the south of Ecuador. Thank you. Um, okay, so the second question is, how successfully have knowledge and action worked together in this case that you mentioned with amphibians? What forms of knowledge and action? Um, and, and can you give an example to illustrate what you've observed in this process? Okay, really good question because to conserve a biodiversity, we have to get a basis in, in acknowledge, see, in, for example, what type of wildlife we want to protect. And in, in this example of amphibians, uh, there's many species in Ecuador, as I say, more of 600 different species of amphibians. And the third of these 600 species of amphibians, it's in some way of uh, danger, yeah, in some critical situation. So, uh, science it's really, is a really important tool to develop knowledge and information to uh, understand the situation of the species and the habitat uh, and uh, the actions, they are also a really important a way to, to develop conservation. And in, in, in the arm of knowledge, what we uh, start to do at the beginning is here in the southern areas of Ecuador, where we know that we have critical species of amphibians, we start to develop uh, surveys and monitors in the wild uh, and different uh, associations and meetings with the best scientists uh, specializing in amphibians here in Ecuador and around the world also. And with all the basis of knowledge of them and also with the information that we get from the wild, we finally understand the situation of the focus species that we were working, see, the amphibians that we were working and uh, we analyzed, sorry, because I have a Macau, <laughs> another two uh, <laughs> students that they are learning, see, <laughs> that's why it's the noise, see. Uh, and what I was saying is that, uh, that was really important at the beginning of our program that it's already for 12 years going on. The first two to three years, we develop a lot of, a lot of actions in the field, trying to understand all the status of conservancy of these amphibians and also to get in link with many scientists and people from around the country and the world to develop better uh, strategies and, and acknowledge about the management and conservation of amphibians. And then after these first years, we jump to the actions. 
And because we know the biology, the ecology, and the threats of these particular species, then with all that information, we develop strategies and we run, uh, run actions to promote conservation. And for example, some of these actions that we made were uh, going in meetings with the community leaders in the surrounding areas of the habitats of these endangered species and uh, developing with them a, a kind of joint venture with their communities to uh, in some way try to involve them in our programs by the child of the schools, by their schools, by their college, see, by the leaders to promote in them the importance and awareness about the amphibians. And we use some really important uh, aspect of the biology of amphibians that is water. Because most of these endangered species that we have in the Andes and in the Amazon of Sounder, of the southern Ecuador, they are uh, species that uh, live in water or close to water, and in some stages of their lives, they need the resource of water, and because they ecology, they clean the water. See, mm -hmm. they are amazing filters, uh, biological filters when they are tadpoles, for example. And when they are this, uh, in this stage in, in tadpoles or larvae, they clean huge amounts of uh, water. And it, so with all that information, we show to these community leaders and to the authorities or, of our local council or of local state uh, that the protection of the amphibians it's important because it's not only in the way of saving one species, it's also in the way of saving all an ecological process that ends with a good quality of water that is used for humans. So when the humans enter in this frame, then uh, the people change the main. Oh, okay. So I need to, to develop actions to protect the amphibians because I'm gonna uh, place in a safe condition the, the water that I use. Okay, perfect. Let's do. And that's how we we get inside. See. So actions from the beginning in terms of developing knowledge, develop a lot of work in the wild and with experts and scientists, and then jump to the community and local actors, all these stakeholders that are around the habitats of the, of the species that we are focused on this program. We manage around more of a dozen, it's around 16 species of amphibians in our programs. Uh, you can uh, meet if if you want in the website of Amari, all the program of amphibians in the section of conservation. And they are most uh, species that are in the risk of extinction. And it's amazing because behind all this work uh, that we keep doing, yeah, uh, we now uh, have changed probably the future of some of these species for a best situation of conservation. And we involve wow. the students from many areas of the world, people from the US, from Europe that want to come and develop their master science degrees or PhD degrees. Uh, uh, we involve rangers from the national parks, uh, and we involve our biopark in the captive uh, 
a breeding facility for some critical endangered species. So it's all an integral program with a lot of actions that obviously take some time to set up, but important that they begin from a very strong uh, frame of acknowledge and science. Mm -hmm. uh, that's so interesting, wow. Um, okay, question three. Um, so we know that there are many threats to biodiversity around the world, but there may be important opportunities as well. So for your case um, with the amphibian project, what do you see as the best opportunities for conservation and what forms of knowledge and or action would be prioritized? Uh, well, uh, I think the best opportunities uh, in, in a conservation program of biodiversity uh, around the world is to work with people. Because if we don't involve people, we can't talk about conservation. The conservation is in the hands of people. Yeah? And if we change the way of life of people in, for example, some communities in the jungles of the Amazon region of Ecuador, to protect the habitat or to protect a specific species that in the past they were hunting or, or using as a natural resource to sail in the illegal markets, then we, we will stop uh, or reduce the risk of uh, extinction or, or problems above these habitats of the species. So definitely one of the main uh, ways to protect uh, and stop most of the threats that are around the world affecting biodiversity is to resolve this by uh, the work with people. But to work uh, with people, we have to come with good information, current information, and scientific information. And that's why it's important, in the other hand, uh, science and acknowledge. See? And that's why it's important to develop important uh, programs of research above the threats, above the uh, ecology or biology of a specific species around the world. Uh, so with all that information that is produced by the science uh, area, you can develop the best strategies to understand how to conserve uh, a specific habitat or, or a species. And uh, currently we are in a world of technology and I will add technology too. It's amazing how uh, easy somehow uh, it's right now to develop uh, science using a cell phone, using a laptop, using a, a tag for birds, for example, for Andean condors, for even for amphibians, little micro tags to understand how they move in the wild. Uh, which areas of their home range they use, and all that information, for example, in the program of uh, conservation of Andean condor here in Ecuador that we joined, we are using by the satellital GPS uh, transmitters to understand how we can develop best ways to protect the home of Andean condors, for example. See, that is a especially of animal that use a huge range of, of them. So uh, I will add also technology. So people work with people and negotiate all the strategies in the best way, involving the local communities, the local stakeholders, then science and 
uh, than technology. So it's really important. And when we talk about people, you can introduce also all the frame of laws and uh, things that are in the in in the language of people and that are that that is used to protect habitats and, and animals in each country. Mm -hmm. That's so, so great, thank you. Um, so um, I know you mentioned that um, Amaru has uh, on its website uh, a, a section about this, but um, I wonder if you'd be able to send to me um, some resources that relate to this topic, um, including your own, but maybe others as well that, that that um, help um, us to understand this better um, more broadly in terms of conservation in Ecuador, conservation of amphibians, um, that sort of thing. Would you mind emailing me um, s the resources you think would be helpful for that? Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I gonna send to you the resources that uh, we use to, to develop a, ideas or, 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 or about the programs so mm -hmm. the students they can they can analyze and they are uh, very welcome to write us or send a, a message to me if they want to be involved in any of our programs we we need hands always the conservation okay. it's not made by one person or one institution it's something that is global, that is from communities, from a social uh, uh, position, and, and that's why it's really important to, to involve uh, people. I don't know if I can uh, share with you uh, the, let me, let me, if you, if you make to me able to, to share a screen. Yep. Show you. Yep. Let me see. Okay. Yeah. I wanna I wanna show you this. These are some of the species that we protect. See, in the in in the southern of Ecuador. So they are amazing frogs. Some of them really colorful. Some other ones more uh, with a camouflage uh, pattern, but all these species, they are critical, endangered, and if uh, in the past uh, 12 years, we don't know nothing, probably a half of them, they will already get extinct because they were losing their habitat very fast, now the habitats are protected by natural reserves or ampliations of the uh, Na Cajas National Park, or they are uh, uh, monitored permanently by our team and by uh, local uh, forest rangers. So that's a really good uh, way to, yeah. to understand how and, and keep the track of how they are uh, being. Uh, and these are, for example, some pictures of our program of amphibians. And I think the, the, the pictures, they speak alone, see? Mm -hmm. Signs in the left si side and uh, developing awareness and, and local knowledge for um, people, for child. Uh, mm -hmm. This is our amphibian uh, conservation center here at Amaru that many mm -hmm. of the students of Lewis and Clark, they have joined and they have mm -hmm. placed their hands actually in, on, on work above the taking care of these uh, species. And this is the logo of our program and uh, you are welcome to, to join. And then I want to, to, to jump to, ah, and last year, the 2019, in Chile, we received a, a Latin American certification as a really good example of a integral conservation 
uh, by Alpsa, that is a Latin American association of parks and aquariums uh, around Central and South America, and was a really good stage of our program. See, so that's also something really important to always uh, developing, performing, and and best level, best standards of, of these projects. These are our, some of our patrocinators and stakeholders. Yeah, so you can see that even there's uh, institutions like Philadelphia Zoo and Antiguan Art that they are from uh, North America and uh, some other institutions from the local government. But then, well, we here at Amar, we want to protect other species of animals like these reptiles. But I want to, to jump to the Andean condor project because I want to show you that uh, protecting this habitat in the south of Ecuador uh, by, the by the focal conservation of condor and their habitat, we protect behind, below his wings, all these other species. So we use this flag species okay, mm -hmm. to protect the, the other species that are more difficult, like poisonous snakes or geckos or uh, wild cats. And uh, talking about uh, uh, technology, look this map. I don't know if it's on a screen light, see? Yeah. The map, all the red dots, they are local points and different movements of one Andean condor. Wow. Cuenca, it's over here, as you can see in the middle. And the Andean condor is almost going to the south of Quito in one, two days. And then they go down almost to Saruma and Loja, almost like 60 kilometers close to the border with Peru. And Cajas National Park is just a section yeah, uh, in the left western side of Cuenca and all the rest of areas they are unprotected so in the past five years that we start this project we make a lot of pressure to local government and the national government to develop a key play zones in this home range to, to protect the, 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 the home of Andean condors and the roasting areas and the breeding areas, the nests. So it's amazing how this helps to, this type of technology helps to, to understand the home range or the situation of an especially. If you see- And do you know that Ernesto? Because, because it was tagged, like this particular condor was tagged and you were able to place it based on that Signal? Exactly. See, and if you see this map, this is Ecuador, and all the Andean protected areas are with the with the red lines. Yeah, but if you see all the yellow dots, these are Andean condors tagged with GPS transmitters. Gotcha. And if you see most of them, they are outside of the protected areas, and that's what we explain in this in this. Uh, uh, graphics, see, right. area, pri private areas, it's bigger than mm -hmm. uh, SNAP areas, that is the system of protected uh, areas of the national government. So mm -hmm. that's why, for example, to conserve Andean condors, we need to develop better strategies of conservation of their uh, key places that are outside of these national parks in the Andes. And in the past, five years ago, all people said, oh yeah, the Andean condors, they use the, our national parks in the Andes. Right. Everyone uh, th thought that the Andean condors, they have a, a sufficient area a, a, a enough of amount of area to conserve the species. But after five years, six years of using technology and research, it's in the opposite. 
and oh, this graphic resumes it's an abstract of that see mm -hmm. eso i just <laughs> wanted to share this yeah that's so interesting i mean that's that just really um it just brings what you're saying so much so much into light it's really clear when you see with the way you're using the the techno the the your knowledge with technology and the education that you already use at Amaru to to get the word out mm -hmm. that's so effective i mean it's it's so impressive see so really yeah, technology amazing. and and scientific research are really important tool and and that's why if the students they want to to be involved in their lives in the future in aspect of conservation of biodiversity or a particular species, it's always necessarily to be in the advance of trying to understand the best strategies using technology and, and using uh, science. Wow, that's so interesting. I love it. So great to hear all of this.